Fortunately, the vast majority of hip and knee replacement patients do great. Those operations are some of our most successful surgeries that we do in orthopedics, with satisfaction rates above 90% for both hip and knee replacement. However, with any surgeries, there are risks, and there are a small percentage of patients that may experience a complication. Let's start with infection. Infection is probably the most dreaded complication after hip and knee replacement. And unfortunately, infection can happen to anyone. We know there are certain risk factors, such as obesity, diabetes, and patients with more complex medical history, but sometimes the healthiest patients can experience an infection. Most infections are caused by bacteria that live on our skin, and unfortunately sometimes, whether it be at the time of surgery or shortly after, the bacteria from the skin can make their way into the hip or knee joint, resulting in infection. Some of the early signs of infection may be increased pain, redness, or swelling at your incision. Certainly, if you experience any of these symptoms after surgery, it's important you notify your surgeon to be seen very quickly. When it comes to infection, early treatment can mean the difference between keeping your new hip or knee joint or us having to remove it. So the next complication we're going to talk about is dislocation. And this complication primarily affects patients who've had hip replacement. So the hip replacement is a ball in a socket, and there is the potential for the ball to come out of the socket. That's what we call dislocation. Fortunately, the risk of this is very low after first time hip replacement. Most of the time we're able to get the ball back in the socket. Unfortunately, some patients may require additional surgery to adjust the positions of the parts or use different implants to provide additional stability to keep the ball in the socket. The third and final complication I'll talk about today is loosening. So the implants we use for hip and knee replacement are fixed to the patient's bone in either one of two ways. We can either cement those on there with bone cement or we can press them on very tightly and they have surfaces bone will grow onto. The vast majority of implants, regardless of whether they're cemented or pressed fit onto the bone, do well over the long term. One of the more frequent signs an implant may be loose would be pain and swelling. Now we know pain and swelling is expected in the first weeks and months after surgery, but it should be improving. If you're continuing to have increasing pain and swelling beyond six months or a year from surgery, this may be concerning for loosening. Unfortunately, loosening almost always requires additional surgery to replace the loose parts. On the front end, as a patient, it's important for you to select a surgeon who you feel comfortable with in the event that you do have a complication, that they're comfortable dealing with it, and you have a plan in place after surgery that minimizes your risk of these. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call at TOA. We'd be happy to see you, and I thank you for your time.